Is a 32-bit float really useful or is it just a marketing gimmick? Let's talk about it. Hey, Julian Kras here and there seems to be a bit of confusion regarding 32-bit float right now. You might ask yourself, why is 32-bit float coming up again when we already had it for years? What's the benefit anyways and do you really need it? Straight up, I want to show you what's possible with 32-bit float that you simply cannot achieve with 24 or 16-bit audio formats. After that, I'll show you where this might come in handy and also spoiler that in most cases you actually do not need 32-bit float for audio recording. But I'll get to that soon enough. Here I have a sine wave and I'm going to digitally amplify it so that the audio goes above 0 dBFS. Then I'll save it in 16-bit, 24-bit and 32-bit float. After that I'll pull back down the audio again and you can see that in the 32-bit float format all the signal is retained. You still have a nice sine wave. Compare this to 16 and 24-bit where the audio is clipped and not recoverable. That's because for the standard 16 and 24-bit audio formats there's a maximum level the audio can go to, also known as 0 dBFS. FS standing for full scale and when a signal tries to go above this level it simply gets cut off. This is clearly not the case for 32-bit float and this is why many people say that 32-bit float audio never clips. But there's a bit more to that and I will get into that a little later. For now the takeaway is that with a 32-bit float we can restore audio above 0 dBFS which prevents clipping while non-float formats like 16 and 24-bit cut off the audio above 0 dBFS. Let's have a look at the other end of the scale. Let's start out with a sine wave again, but this time I decrease the amplitude by 130 decibels and save it as 16 and 24 bit as well as 32 bit float. Now I bring the audio back up again to the original amplitude and you can see that the 32 bit float file kept the wave remarkably clean, whereas the 24 bit audio introduced quite a bit of distortion and the 16-bit file simply wasn't able to store any audio data at all. We could have improved the situation a bit if we used dither, but that's beyond the scope of this video. But overall it makes sense. You only have a certain amount of data available and when the signal gets smaller and smaller, there comes a point where there are simply no more bits left to store the signal. I know, these are deliberately fabricated scenarios. In the real world you likely never need to boost your audio by 130 decibels. But it goes to show that there is a limit on how strong or soft a signal can get before it cannot be stored anymore in an audio format. This range from the smallest possible signal to the strongest one is usually expressed as a ratio and that's what is referred to as dynamic range. And by the way it has nothing to do with low or high frequencies, so the pitch of the sound, it is all about the amplitude. When comparing bit depth you will inevitably come across this picture which compares the dynamic ranges of the different formats. And you can see exactly what I demonstrated with the experiment before. 16-bit has the lowest dynamic range, 24-bit has quite a bit more and a 32-bit float has an incomprehensibly huge dynamic range. With each bit more you increase the dynamic range by about 6 decibels and that's why 24-bit has about 48 dB more dynamic range than 16-bit. But you might have noticed that 32-bit float is a lot bigger than 24 bits and that's due to the float format. I will spare you the technical details here but the float part essentially allows the decimal point to float and that can increase the resolution tremendously compared to non-float formats. I'm simplifying here but the important part is that the dynamic range of 32-bit float is huge and it can store the tiniest signals and even ones that exceed 0 dBFS. This increased precision can be really useful when audio processing because there are complex calculations that take place and in these cases you want to retain a huge range of signal amplitudes and that's the reason why we've been using 32-bit float in audio programs for years now in the editing and processing stage. What's new now is that a 32-bit float is used as a format in which audio interfaces and sound recorders save the audio to. So 32-bit float is not a new tech, it's actually quite old, but it's new in a sense that it is now used as a recording format. Now here's the part where people often get confused about and before we dive in, Please like this video and subscribe if you enjoyed it so far. Many audio devices that are capable of 32-bit float are advertised to successfully prevent clipping. One might think that 32-bit float is responsible for that, but that's not totally correct. I mean it can play a role as I showed you earlier. You essentially can't clip anymore when the signal is already in the digital domain. 
But if we are talking about audio recording, there are many more things in the audio chain that can limit your dynamic range. For example, your microphone will have a certain amount of dynamic range. The preamp and of course the analog to digital converter found in the recording device also has a certain amount of dynamic range. So just because you save your audio into a 32-bit float does not mean that you cannot clip somewhere else in the signal chain. But it does at least eliminate the format that the audio is saved in as a potential bottleneck. One more important point to add. 32-bit float does not sound better than 24-bit if both are used correctly. In fact, in the majority of situations they are audibly indistinguishable, it's just that with 32-bit float you have a bit more convenience in post-production. That also means that a 32-bit float is not a magic solution that makes everything sound awesome. You will still have to practice proper audio recording technique and care as much about mic placement and similar things as with 24-bit. If you record shitty audio, it will sound shitty in 32-bit float as well. But why is it now that 32-bit float recorders are advertised with being impossible to clip? Well, usually these devices not only feature 32-bit float, but some kind of additional technology which enables the device to capture a higher dynamic range than normally possible. One of these techniques, for example, is the use of multiple analog to digital converters, which when combined can capture a very high dynamic range. I actually already made a video about this topic if you're interested. And this is actually the reason why these devices don't clip anymore, because they simply capture everything from the softest to the loudest signal. Now you would say, great, and this is where 32-bit float makes sense, because it can hold the huge dynamic range you can capture with multi-ADC setups. Well, but so can 24-bit, because in reality with dual or triple ADC setups you still likely do not get a dynamic range that exceeds what 24-bit can handle. And even if it could, it is highly questionable if you would ever need this amount of dynamic range. Think about it, 140 dB SPL is the threshold of pain, which means that the sound is so loud that you get physical pain from the audio and you are forced to cover your ears. And you can capture these loud signals and everything all the way down to 0 dB SPL, which is where sounds just become audible. This is already an insane range of amplitudes you can capture with 24-bit. So the increased dynamic range of 32-bit float, in my opinion, is hardly a benefit when it comes to audio recording. And by the way, not needing to set your gain with 32-bit float is another benefit that is often thrown into the room. But again, this is not unique to 32-bit float. If you capture a huge dynamic range, you do not need to set your gain anymore, because you simply capture everything from the very soft to very loud signals. And as mentioned before, 24-bit already covers a dynamic range big enough to handle the majority of situations. Okay, Julian, but the whole time you're essentially saying that 24-bit is already good enough to capture high-quality audio. What's the benefit of 32-bit float then? Convenience. I think the biggest advantage of 32-bit float is that while recording you can digitally bring up the audio to a signal level which is much closer to the loudness of how you would distribute the audio. So you are more in a what you see is what you get kind of situation. With 24-bit to use the whole dynamic range, in most situations you would usually have to leave yourself a huge amount of headroom and then the signal seems very weak. In itself this is not a problem, but this might be more difficult to monitor and when you go into post-production, some plugins might expect a bigger signal level to start with. With 32-bit float you can store the audio at a stronger level, closer to what it would be in final delivery and you still don't have to worry about clipping as all audio above 0 dBFS is retained. In essence, recording in 32-bit float eliminates the audio format as a potential bottleneck and it has the added convenience that once you have the signal in the digital realm, you can amplify or attenuate it to your heart's content while always being able to retain all the audio information. The important part is that this only affects how the audio is stored and has no impact on the other components prior in your signal chain. Best practices in audio recording like proper mic placement are still as important as before. 32-bit float will not magically make anything sound better. So think of 32-bit float as a container. It can hold an incredible dynamic range, but what matters is what you put into this container. If the analog section of an audio recording device is not that great, 32-bit float is not going to improve things. This also means that not all 32-bit float recording devices are created equally. 
If a device supports it, it just has the potential to hold a huge dynamic range. But how much it really captures is a completely different story. So do you absolutely need 32-bit float for recording? No. 24-bit already provides more dynamic range than you probably ever need and when used correctly it can be indistinguishable from 32-bit float in terms of sound quality. 32-bit float simply has the advantage that you can digitally amplify the audio while recording to a level which will be closer to the final delivery loudness and that can make monitoring the audio and using plugins and generally post-production a bit easier. That of course comes at the expense of a slightly increased file size. So I wouldn't say it's purely a marketing gimmick, but it's also not this crazy life-changing technology that some make it out to be. Alright, like and subscribe and I will see you all in the next one.